Hudson with Haas Automation and we have created this video to introduce you to the new graphical user interface that will be appearing on selected Haas machines beginning in October of 2007. Graphical user interface is a fancy term for new screen layout. What we have done with the new screens is reorganize them into three general modes to give users access to every control feature needed in that mode without having to leave the current display screen. The three modes are setup, operation, and edit. Along the way, we added many new features and enhancements, so let's get started with our introduction. The keypad is not changed at all, and virtually every key performs its same function as before. While the screens look very different, the control works very much the same. So to begin, I press reset to clear the alarms and power up restart to home the machine. Notice at the top of the screen that we are immediately in setup mode and the active function is zero return. Handle jog is also a function within setup mode. So to begin, I'll press the hand jog key and I'm ready to begin setting up my offsets. Let's take a look around the screen at the different boxes of information. The active program box is displayed in the upper left. The tool offsets are displayed to the right. Below the tool offsets are the work zero offsets. Along the bottom, we have the spindle information box with the override values for spindle speed, feed rate, and rapid rate. Next to that is the position box showing operator, work offset, machine, and distance to go coordinates. Here to the right is the tool management information. Below is where status messages like single block and block delete are displayed. Along the bottom, in the old familiar place, is the data input box. Notice the tool offset box is white and the rest of the boxes are colored. This signals that the focus is on the tool offsets box. Pressing the arrow keys immediately begins moving the cursor around this box. I put my cursor on the linked offset for tool one, press the tool offset measure key, and my first tool is set. I press the next tool key, same as always, and I'm ready to go with tool two. In previous versions of the Haas control, if I wanted to go to the work zero offsets, I would press the offset key. It's the same with the new control. Now when I press the offset key, the focus changes to the work zero offset box, and I scroll around this box to set my offsets. Both offset boxes look very much the same as before, except that we have added this column for tool type in the tool offset box. You have the ability to define your cutters as one of five tool types. The available types are drill, tap, shell mill, end mill, and spot drill. Another feature added in the control is the ability to sort offsets. By pressing the F3 key with the focus on an offset screen, you can sort all the offsets by whichever column the cursor is on. For example, if you move the cursor over to the tool type column and press F3, the control will display the tool offsets in order by the tool type. This will come in handy when you need to look at all the different drills you have in the machine. The final change to the tool offset display is the addition of the pocket tool table here in the tool offset box. Before we move on to the next screen, note I can jog the machine axis without leaving the display. Well, I've got my offsets set now, so I need to load my program. I press the same button as always, list programs. Notice at the top of the screen, I'm now in edit mode, and list is the active function. The list program screen now has tabs to navigate the different devices connected to the machine. The program I want is on my USB memory stick. So I connect it to the machine, watch the control recognize it, cursor over to the USB device and press the enter key. It displays all the files on my USB memory stick. If I wanted to load several files, I could press the enter key when the files I want are highlighted and the control marks those files with a check mark. Now, the next function I select, like delete or copy, will happen to all the marked files. I only want to copy this one program, so I'm going to press the undo key to remove the check marks. I press the F2 key to bring up the copy to dialog box. I highlight the device I want to copy the program to, in this case, memory, and hit the enter key. 
for a complete list and description of all the functions of list programs and file navigation, press the help key to access the quick key help menu. We have the command name, the associated key for each function, and at the bottom is a full description of how to perform each function. There are now extensive quick key help menus from many screens in the new control. I need to make a quick change to my program, so I will press the edit key like I have always done. Notice along the top of the screen, I am in edit mode and edit is the function. This area of the screen has changed quite a bit, so let's look around. Here in the upper left corner is the active program edit box. Notice this note in the title bar, cycle start to simulate. In edit, I can press cycle start to go directly to graphics mode and run a program. And now we have the ability to speed up and slow down the graphics processing speed with the F3 and F4 keys. I press reset to go back to edit mode. Over here to the right, I have the program list. I press edit one more time and the focus changes to this side of the screen. I scroll to select a second program I want to edit, and that program is available for editing. Down here in the lower left corner, I have the editor help box. When I press F1, I get the advanced editor like I used to. As I scroll around the topics in the advanced editor, the help description for each topic is displayed in the editor help box. We now have a viewable clipboard in the bottom right side of the edit screen. Anytime you cut or copy a selection to the clipboard, it will be displayed in the clipboard box. You can also use this as a storage area for text or code commands that you repeatedly paste into your programs. The third function under the edit mode is MDI. When I press the MDI key, I get the same manual data input screen as before. One press of the program converse key toggles me between this box and the visual quick code programming system and the intuitive programming system if they are activated on this machine. Our final mode is operation mode. As you might well guess, I enter the operation mode by pressing the memory key. In operation mode, we have all the information needed to run the machine organized and available for access. Again, the upper left corner is the program display box. While executing programs that run sub-programs, both the main and the sub-program will be displayed in a split screen box. Next are the active G codes with text descriptions, coolant level indicator, and the active tool information, including the graphic image of the tool type taken from the tool offset page. In the center of the screen is the offset window. This box is ready for any offset adjustment while the machine is running. I don't have to exit this screen to change an offset. Along the bottom, we have the spindle information box with the override display. In the center is the position display box and to the right, timers and counters. As an experienced machinist, one of my favorite new features is this little display here. This is titled Remaining. The remaining timer uses the information from the last cycle timer to display the time remaining in the program. In a production environment, this will allow the operator to know how much time is remaining in the cycle and make better time management decisions when leaving the machine. Now let's go back to the keypad. Every button on the left side of the keypad performs the exact same function in the exact same way with the exception of F3 and F4. F3 now slows down the speed of the graphics and F4 speeds up the graphics. Obviously there has been no change to the function of the letter keys and the number keys as well as the cursor navigation keys. So that leaves displays. When I press the program converse key, the focus changes to the active program box. When I press the position key, the focus changes to the position display box. More presses toggle through the four position displays, just like previous versions of the Haas control. Pressing the offset key changes the focus to the offset box, and successive presses toggles between tool offsets and work zero offsets. 
Pressing the current commands key displays the macro variables page, and pressing page up or page down from here toggles through the same pages as before. The new user settable operation timers and counters setup page has been added to current commands. This page allows you to reset your timers and counters as before, but also allows you to monitor the value of up to two macro variables at the same time. You can enter a custom name for the variable, the variable number, and the control will always display the value of that variable. There is no change to the alarm message display other than the added quick key help screens. The last key is the help calc key. We have regrouped the help and calculator functions into the tab format. Under help, we have sub tabs for G code and M code lists, features, which is a quick overview of the topics covered in this video, and index. The index subtab is a wealth of information on the Haas control and should be read before operating the machine. Along with the help tab, there is a drill table tab, which is a drill tap chart, and the calculator tab. As you can see, the look of the Haas control has changed quite a bit. In reality, the operation of the machine and how the user performs functions on the machine has not changed much at all. We realize change can be difficult. But we believe after a short time working with this new Haas control, you'll be hooked and realize that the most user-friendly machine tool control in the world just got much better.